hi everyone it's arthur and this is mel i don't know which side he's on <laughs> it's aloha tuesday <laughs> and this is arthur at arthur ease your mind here on youtube arthur ease your mind .com, and the aloha shirt psychic mel door here from go. chicago and everybody please thumbs up subscribe and you know that little bell hit that then you'll know when we're coming on remember that disco song gonna ring my bell you ring my bell. Yeah. I can't. Now you're thinking of that all night. Sorry. <laughs> so um, how have you been? I'm good. Uh, a little tired, but I'm good. Yeah, I was doing a show last night, and I just told everyone, I'm just tired. I said, I felt like Madeline Kahn from Blazing Saddles. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's going to be a busy week, I think, huh? Well... In New York, in a courthouse. You got it. Um, oh. I won't be like Dalzing Donald. I was going to say, what if they can sell him them no dos or something? Yeah. <laughs> but apparently, David Pecker gave it to him with both barrels today. I didn't hear it. But if I were that guy, I'd change my last name. And it's totally appropriate for him. I mean, it really well, is. He, he was basically the owner of the National Enquirer here for a while. He was what? He was the owner of American Media Inc., which owns National Enquirer. They must have and, given him immunity from prosecution or something, because what he did was complicit in this whole thing. They, he, there's an agreement. Yeah. There's an agreement in place. But basically what he said today was that by paying people to hold back stories and not printing them it didn't help the national Enquirer, but it helped the campaign it oh, sure. no but that's the exact words he used on his, his statement so it's exactly what michael cohen was saying so they can't say oh it's all michael cohen did on his own well trump can say anything he wants you know he's... no he can't there's a gag order i watched a speech <laughs> outside the courtroom yesterday and you know, always the perpetual victim. Uh, and then somebody on Fox again, oh, it's the liberal jury, the this, the that, which was nothing further from the truth. And then Trump is like, well, this is just an error in bookkeeping. Oh, you mean an error in bookkeeping to cover up the fact that you worked with the Enquirer uh, to cover up a story so that you could get elected president? Not one, not two, Lies, not but three. And then we talked about the made-up story with um, Ted Cruz and his father being involved with the assassination of JFK. Oh, yeah. And Pecker basically said it was all fabricated. It was all made up. And then Trump, right. Well, we all knew that. But. Yeah, but then Trump playing, I just saw it and I made a comment on it. Yeah, he planted it. And that's what he was doing. I mean, if you recall... That's what Trump does. He will say, oh, and then he'll tell somebody else and they'll say it. And he thinks it gets him out of trouble, but it doesn't. Well, it doesn't. And that's what he's trying in this court. And he's going to be held in contempt. I did hear a little bit about the arguments today. And I heard his his lawyer's arguments about Trump not shutting his mouth and the contempt thing. They made a fool of themselves. Well, even the judge said you've lost all, you know, all credibil all all credibility. All credibility. Yeah. But unfortunately, he's just a mouthpiece for for Trump, you know. Well, I think Trump is kind of itching to go to jail because then he could say, they threw me in jail, they threw me in jail, you know, but that's not going to work either. No. I see this judge really coming down hard on him. Well, he hasn't made a decision yet. Well, the thing is, though, Alan Bragg and his people have not asked for him to be sent to jail or anything. They just want him to be sanctioned. Well, but yet. <laughs> yet. I see that the judge will fine him. And then Trump's going to be, I got fined because we... I wish I, I got to learn to do Donald Trump, but for what purpose? Why? Uh, yeah, right. Anyway, we call Alec Baldwin. He's good at it. Uh, and then Trump's going to open his mouth again. And I see him, then the judge saying, okay, now we can put you under house arrest. And I see something like that where 
you know, he can only leave his hotel room or whatever to come to court. He can't talk to the media. I mean, he, there, he, there's going to be a total game over if he doesn't stop it. I just want them to wheel him in on a gurney or a, a, like Hannibal Lecter. And it's not against his freedom of speech, by the way. Uh, not well, if he, not if he's intimidating the, a jury. He's the thing is though, you lose a lot of your rights when you're a criminal defendant. You can't say the things you want. He's a criminal defendant. Well, you don't lose your rights because you're technically innocent until you're proven guilty. Right, but when a court is, but you cannot, like but you cannot intimidate exactly the or. The defendant, I'm sorry, are the people who are going to testify, the witnesses can't do that. Right. Intimidation. Says, oh, Alvin Bragg was going to take this case and he didn't. This should be a federal case. It should be the state of New York. No, it happened in the state of New York. It was the whole cover up was in the state of New York. Right. And when, when he talked about Alvin Bragg, that's a completely different case. It was the, the, you know, this case is completely different. Bragg had that thing going with. I'm um, sorry, I, I, I got. The, I, they're all they all go in my head sometimes. New York, Alan Bragg, but this I forget the guy's name is dealing with this. But no, it's all you know. But the thing is, Alina Haba was on Fox saying, "You notice how it's all in blue states? It's all in blue states, and it's all Democrats doing some purpose." Really, what about Florida? When Trump said about Bragg. Oh, he had this, you know, he had this case to begin with and then, and then he didn't have enough. It was a completely different case. That that was about the fraud case in New mm -hmm. York. That was a civil case with Trump defrauding New York. Right. Of all the money that he's now that, that he's going to pay. Thing. This is federal. Now that he's now that he's going to have to pay the 175 million, but this case going on with the Stormy Daniels is still the, in the state of New York. Right, but criminal. He said that it was a different, that when he said Bragg had this case in the beginning, he didn't do anything with it. That's a lie. It was a completely different case. Right. And also the reason why this case is coming up from 2016 is because Bill Barr squashed everything originally. Well, this case is in the state of New York. It's not federal. No, but Bill Barr still put a lot of pressure that this case would not go forward. And that's why it's going forward now after the fact. Well, you know, it's still in the state of New York. It's not federal because it occurred in New York. I understand that. I'm just. Right. No, no, no. I get that. But I still think that the other case where he, you know, was convicted. Well, he in the civil case, civil case, he was fraud, fraud, and he has to pay back four hundred seventy-five million. I still see that being sent over to the attorney general of the state of New York for criminal prosecution. We we, we agree on that one. We have said that in the past as well. Right. Now, what about this hundred seventy-five million dollar? Oh, I heard him talk about that. He was unhinged. He came out of the courtroom talking about this case. And then he went over to that case and Judge Angeron and I had the money and because they weren't something in the state of New York. They weren't licensed. Right, right. And I've got the money in my account to pay it. Well, if you've got the money in your account to pay Why it. Why didn't pay it with? Correct. First you said you had it. Then you didn't have it. You couldn't afford it. So you got your bond reduced. Now you say you have it. And you better be careful. You just put in, you put in the account, just like you did the first five million with uh, the E.G. and Carroll. He came oh. up with the five million. They put in the account. Period. So if he has one hundred seventy five, then put it in the account. Period. But if it's they want the, account, they wanted the the whole four seventy five. But if he keeps on, oh, I've got the money. Then the judge is going to say, if you've got the money, pay the whole thing. I still see them uh, uh, confiscating some of his assets. I still see it. Yeah, as I said, he's going to lose his asset <laughs> without the set. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but what he's trying in this case is um, he's going to, they're trying some shenanigans to try to get a mistrial or a hung jury. A hung jury is where one juror just says, yeah. not guilty, not guilty. If that's the case, and it could be, but if it is the case, 
whether it's a mistrial or a hung jury, I see another trial, if that happens, that would come very quickly and that Trump would be found guilty. And, you know, either or. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Well, uh, I don't see this as a hung jury. I just see it going. He's guilty before the election. No, right. I'm just saying. Though. I know in devil's advocate, just in, in the realm of things. I understand. Well, because I've heard people ask about that. But the, my answer is, whether it's another trial or this trial, he's going to be found guilty. And I think people underestimated the significance of this trial. They thought it was just a hush. They thought it was just about Stormy Daniels. No, 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 no. It was the cover up. It was the conspiracy. It was the thing to try to change the outcome of an election. And you know what, Arthur? It was funny. The other night, I was thinking about this and my psychic light bulb was blinking, you know, like, rawr, rawr. and I see a point in time that there's going to be so much more coming out about Trump that I see, I don't know who's going to file suit, but to say, was he a legal president? And at some point I see, um, I don't know if it's the Supreme Court or somebody saying, he was not legally elected. There was all this stuff going on. He coerced the system and they will, I don't know what they do, but they'll say that they can say, we're not going to honor the presidency. In other words, he, he wasn't the president fair and square. <laughs> right. It's like Jefferson yeah. Davis kind of, you know. But during, <laughs> during the Roman days, they would remove names from pillars and history books everything that's the chisel yeah yeah he's i mean i i see his presidency overturned i mean it's going to be a while before that happens right and i see it going to the supreme court and i see a different supreme court that will there's going to be evidence to prove that you know the russians colluded that putin colluded that all this kind of stuff that he pulled to hush the story up because when he said it was to protect melania that's going to come out in court. Absolutely not. It's I not also, a... when we talk about Melania, this is a little off that, but I still feel her getting in trouble with that visa, the genius visa that she was given. Yep. She's a genius, really? She's got a lot of trouble coming too. Yeah. So, anyway. But you have to live in the country in order to get in trouble. <laughs> That's true. Um, no, but I didn't hear... Um, Peckers, uh, what he what he testified, but I'm sure it was pretty damning. Very, very. Wonder, you know, I'm just wondering how the defense is going to play this because for the last couple of days, they ain't doing too good, you all. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it, it's it's not pretty, you know. You know, I'm, I'm, I think they're working on some coloring books for his for his base now. And the trial. They, they sell that much orange. <laughs> True. Well, actually, somebody said he looked more jaundiced than orange. He looks sick. He really does. Yeah. Um, I see bad things with his health on the near horizon. Well, you know, the very first show I did with Linda... Under my breath, I muttered, you have to be alive to be a president. Yeah, I remember that. It was like, did I say that? But now I say it, you know. So do you want to get to some questions? Yes, let's do. Let's get as many done as we can. How's that? Okay. So for Aloha Tuesday, um, April 23rd, John Holden asks, great seeing you two together. Arthur, you have... You have been seeing Mike Johnson leaving around the end of May and Clarence Thomas stepping down before the election. Are Manny, Mo, and Jack still seeing this? Those are my guides, Manny, Mo, and Jack. Oh, Manny, yeah. Mo, and Jack? <laughs> yeah. M, M, and J? Huh? M, M, and J? Your yeah. guides? Where is it? Um, well, when, you know, Johnson passed that Ukraine bill, you know, he said, oh, he got a nod from Donald Trump. Oh, I love it. <laughs> One of my clients made this movie for my birthday. Manny Moe and Jack. That's so cool. When um, 
you know, Johnson, when he passed the Ukraine bill, but before that, oh, well, Donald Trump reluctantly agreed. And then I heard Lindsey Graham, well, it's kind of a loan. It was Donald Trump's idea and blah, blah, blah. And I thought, wait just a damn minute here. Pardon my language. Donald Trump is not president. He had absolutely nothing to do with this. And it really, really infuriated me. Oh, yeah. He has not been the president for almost three and a half years. And I'm thinking, this just, there's something wrong with this. It's just disconnect. And also Mar Marjorie Taylor Greene, when she was making some comments, says, well, we're just trying to follow the policies of President Trump. Yeah, right. He's not, a, he's, he's not the Trump. president. <laughs> he's soon to be a convicted criminal felon. Um, with numbers after his name. But you know what? The thing is, I mean, she's making all the threats to unseat him, and she's only got a small following like this. And a lot of Republicans, and I heard a Republican talking, I forget where he was from, and he said, you know, many of us Republicans just want to do our job. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we're tired of this, he didn't say obstructionism, tired of this small group controlling everything. We just want to govern. We want to do our job. The people's work. The people's job. Correct. And, um, you know, so Marjorie Taylor Greene and a couple other crazies that are this whole handful of crazies, I see gone. And if they try to unseat him, she's not going to succeed because right now the Dems need Johnson because they got the Ukraine bill passed. Well, yeah, but they got the Ukraine bill and they can still say, OK, we got what we wanted now. Bye. But I still see Hakeem Jeffries in before the election. And I've been saying Clarence Thomas. I thought it was last October, I feel it's this October, end of October, that he's going to be stepping down under quote-unquote health reasons, but it's really because of everything else. So because I'm still standing by that. Entertainment purposes only, because we all know who's Let hit pocket. Is. entertain you. <laughs> right. Um, Teacher Barbara, 23. Go ahead. Hey, fellas. This is not a question, but just a FYI. Starting next year, we are required to teach anti-communism in Florida starting in first grade. I think it might be K, but I'm not sure. Talk about a dumb waste if it's if time standard. It's difficult enough trying to teach us teach them about US history because some of them still think George Washington is still alive. Just kidding. It's just getting weirder and weirder here. But I you know that's gonna changing. change when when the Satan is out, you know, back when I was in high school, back when State Street was the prairie, it was a long time ago. Um, we had a civics teacher and, you know, everybody was, I mean, there was a communist everywhere. It was, it was post McCarthy, it yeah. was in the 60s, you know, and, you know, people were starting to protest. The youth were protesting about all the BS from McCarthy and all that and equal rights and blah, blah, blah. And this civics teacher would make us listen to this stuff from the John Birch Society. And it was a film strip. And in those days, they would put on a record and it would talk about this, this, that, and go ding. And then you would, yeah, <laughs> different little the slide, yeah, slide would come up. And when I heard about this, I'm like, it reminded me of that. You know what, Barbara? This too shall pass. I mean, how many countries are counting? Maybe China. And maybe Vietnam, which is socialistic, but um, I don't see the anti-communism gig holding up, to be honest with mm -hmm. you. I mm -hmm. see it being taken to the courts and the courts will overturn it. I, But I also see when we get around 2026, I do see an overhaul on a lot of the education. You know, yeah, so they can teach history the way it should be taught. Mm -hmm. you know? And I'm, Rosa Parks was not the owner of a... Uh, you know, Piggly Wiggly somewhere. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I remember when I was in high school, I got in so much trouble because they were talking about during the Bolshe Bolshevik revolution and, you know, during the rise of Nazism, they burnt books. Mm -hmm. And in the Bolshevik revolution, they rewrote the history books and they did the same in Germany. And I raised my hand and the teacher said, yes, Melvin. And I said, we didn't have to rewrite our history books because you all think that we did it right the first time, but we really didn't. Oh, I got so much you get out of here right now. You get to the principal's office. 
Melvin, you really have to control what you're saying in class. Why? Because I told the truth. Yeah. So I remember getting in trouble for that. And I thought, well, come on. Do you really believe for a nanosecond that George Washington chopped down the cherry tree? Mom, I cannot tell a lie. It's or that he a stole the dollar across the Potomac. Do you know freaking why the Potomac is? It didn't happen. It was folk hero. It was, they were, you know, they were making yeah. Just like Johnny <laughs> Appleseed. Thank you. <laughs> didn't work. No. But I do still, again, I feel a lot of educational things are going to be changing by 2026. For the better. For the, for better. the better. For the better. Books will be back on shelves. I like the fact that the Satan kind of walked back the banning of books when a group got the uh, Bible with with Drew. Well, that's true. I mean, if you're going to ban this book, why can't you ban that book? I see books back on the shelves like The Catcher in the Rye and To Kill a Mockingbird, and um, those were must reads when we. What are they going? Those were must reads when we were in. Yeah. High what are they going to ban next? The Hobbit. <laughs> Come on. Harry Potter, because it's about witchcraft. Oh, it's about as stupid as everything else that they're banning. <laughs> yeah, no. It is what it is, but there's changes afoot and good ones. Buffy, 22-22. I'm not sure if you've addressed the TikTok ban issue, but will they succeed? I hope not. It's one of the best apps around for information and doggy videos. Well, <laughs> I do see a ban on it, but it won't last. And I'm thinking that they're they're going to just say that, you know, the Chinese or other countries can't use it as a way to uh, to put out untrue propaganda and to collect information and you and use that to try to influence the outcome of elections. I. I don't see it being banned per se because they're asking it to be bought yes. by another a third comp third entity. I see that's going to go through. I don't see TikTok going away. But they better be careful with that because, you know, they're, they were just disseminating or using TikTok to... No, there'll be a, a, the algorithms, whatever you want to call it, will be monitored. I feel will be monitored. That's no, what what information is being gathered and... But yeah. what I was going to say was, you know, they're, they're using that to gather information to yeah. figure out the demographics so they can disseminate false information. So but if what they I, can't get it, they'll just pay Mark Zuckerberg for the info. I couldn't hear you. So if they don't get it, they'll just pay Mark Zuckerberg for the info. I think, right? I think what they'll do, if somebody buys it, you have to be careful because this could be a shell company to say, okay, we bought it but they could still be feeding that information yeah. back. So they're going to put, you're right, they'll put algorithm, algorithms. Regulations, and, whatever. You know. But there are, there, TikTok are, will last, I promise. Yeah. Garden Genie, 6300. Hi, Mel and Arthur. As Trump's health is deteriorating so quickly, do you feel it's possible we could end up with a Republican woman on the ballot instead, and who will it be? Will that make it harder for Biden to win? I'm especially concerned about Liz Cheney. More to the point, what do your guides say? Thank you. Republicans as they exist right now would never put Liz Cheney on the ballot. They and might put somebody like Nikki would, Haley. They, they won't even put Yeah, but I've been, I've been saying when Trump does wherever he goes... I always felt that Nikki Haley takes over because she's got delegates. I've always seen Nikki Haley stepping in for Trump. I don't know why, but I'm just for entertainment purposes only. But, but she doesn't win. No, that's a very, very strong possibility. Yeah. But that's that's what Manny Moe and Jack have to say about it. <laughs> All right. User, what happens to cause MAGAs to be disillusioned with 45? He opens his mouth. His small base will still be his small base. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this question comes about a lot. And you've got Minnie Moe and who? 
Manny Moe and Jack. Jack Kennedy. Uh, many. Who, who are they? I'm just curious. Manny Moe and Jack are the name of the Pet Boys. Oh, I gotcha. And I, gotcha. I call them. I call them my guides. And because okay. my guys don't give me the, their names, and I've often said, "What are you, Manny Moe and Jack?" And they just started howling one day. I'm like, "Okay, that's what I'm calling you guys." I didn't get it. I went, "Duh." <laughs> yeah, that's why. I, and I also say that my guardian angel is an alcoholic following me. My guardian angel is on Valium right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't think that all the maga magas, or have you pronounced it, will ever totally be disillusioned with Trump. It's like when the Nazis were defeated. And a lot of people in these little towns who sympathize with the Nazis, and I heard somebody from the Shoah Foundation speaking who survived the Holocaust. And in the little town where they were deported from, you know, a lot of the people that, you know, that were pro-Nazi, when they went back to the town, those same people, oh, we weren't Nazi at all. We didn't. Blah, 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 blah. So they're still going to be around, but a lot of them will crawl back in the woodwork. And a lot of them still have their great grandfathers or grandfathers' uniforms in the basement. Nazi uniforms. I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding on that. I, I have a couple friends who know people over there, and they're like, "We went over there, and they, they still have the gatherings, and they still have the uniforms, and it's kind of strange." But so I don't I... think there'll always be disillusion. But I feel that some of them. There was a question when people were voting if during the primaries if trump were to be convicted would you vote for him and they said no what I, that, yes agreed but a lot of people with this whole trial are starting to even change their political affiliation and not vote for trump um the only thing is those hardcore magas yeah the, the good old boys, the proud boys. And I see uh, CIA, FBI infiltrating those organizations. Uh, a few of those will still be around. But, um, you know, a lot of people are going to know that they drink the a lot. Of, you know? A lot of people are going to know that they drink the Kool-Aid. Uh, some of them will be like, you know, Trump didn't do anything. It's a frame up. They'll hold on to that. But once he's out and gone, they'll kind of crawl back in the woodwork a little bit. Mm -hmm. to find their next leader right <laughs> cj feng shui it's not a question it's just i love hearing your discussions you both rock thank you and nancy says the same thing you guys make it fun with all the chaos happening sending love and light back at you but it looks like these are our opinions but they're really oh, based yeah they're yeah. based on our psychic stuff and people say that to me mel is that your opinion or is that your psychic it's all about my intuition. It's all about my psychic ability. I just do it like this. I think I'm not that smart. <laughs> it's not. It's not no. me. Really, I'm the hell is idiot. <laughs> Every village has ones, and I'm <laughs> here. So M, Tur that's a good point, though. I said that last time too, and and it is important to people to remind people we may be discussing, we may be talking about things, but there. It's coming from other sources. Right. You know, you have your light bulbs. I go, oh, oh, oh. I, I have like, light bulbs. Bulb bulb bulb. bathroom again. No, I have the answer. I have electric gel. <laughs> Whatever. That's what they should put on Trump so he doesn't fall asleep. About electric collar. <laughs> electric collar. <laughs> no, because then he might pass out stuff other than flatulence, and that wouldn't be good in the court. <laughs> Where's the bucket of sawdust? We digress. <laughs> Actually, well, they, they could spray way off topic. There was a concert pianist, I'm not going to say her name, who <laughs> was very nervous before a <laughs> concert. She did the open, she's playing the Greek piano concerto, and she did the opening, and you know, dun, dun, and then the, the runs up, and then she threw up into the piano. And the janitor just came up and threw sawdust. And then they switched out the pianos. It sounds oh. like a skit from Carol Burnett, but it's the truth. I can see in the courtroom spraying pine saw on somebody's thing. Hey, who's <laughs> it'll be like <laughs> um who sprayed pine saw on the outhouse? No, it's when when he comes walk when he comes walking in, he has a little pine thing from his lapel. 
<laughs> they having cars. Look, we got to go forward. This is getting way. I'm, I'm sorry. We're all sl- I'm slap happy. I haven't slept too well. <laughs> slap me. I'll be happy. Okay. I'm back. Ruby Ann, 20, 2002. How bigly mad is 45 after Jimmy Kimmel's la- latest opening? During last night's show, Jimmy presented a series of DJT clips with fatulent noises peppered throughout. Kind of looks like what we're talking about. After each clip, Jimmy asked this audience to not report the clips. In other words, make them go viral. So basically, how oh, he, to use the word bigly, Ruby Ann sounds something. Hi, Ruby Ann. To use the word bigly, he's bigly pissed. <laughs> he's bigly, man, girl. He crapped himself. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. We're talking about what happens when he sees this? Uh, no. He's bigly mad. Yeah. Okay. KBJ7822. Hi, handsomes, with an S. I'm a South African viewer. South Africa. Hello. And I also enjoy your collabs. Thank we you. have an election coming up in South Africa in May and a criminal former president, not unlike a certain American one, has started his own party, the MK party, and it's just smells of rubles. Our you ruling party... Right it. it is rubles. It's either getting money from Pupkin. Yeah, well, it's... Continue. Our ruling party has sold out to Russia and China. Please, can you tell me how this MK party will do in the elections and how will Uber Chief President Jacob Zumu fare? Thank you, guys. Well, you know, South Africans need to get out and vote the same way that we need to get out and vote. Mm -hmm. You know, um, South Africa had apartheid. It was a small group of whites running everything else. But, you know, it's there's going to be a lot of court trials in South Africa about this thing that uh, KBG is talking about. And uh, I see the, um, the guy who started the MK party. Mm-hmm. I see him under indictment. And I see him jailed. Uh, And it's going to come out that they that Russia and China were influencing these elections in South Africa. And um, um, there's going to be a a, a real big S show down there. Took the words out of my mouth. Um, I don't I think the MK party will do pretty well. I don't think they're. I don't feel them coming to. Yeah, but But it's Jacob Zuma who's starting the MK party, isn't it? Yeah, she doesn't give the name. I, yeah. I well, it says a former criminal president, and then right. well, uh, right. So it's she, just I feel it's going to be turmoil for the next two years there, but it's all going to even. It's going to even out. Um, Uber crew president Jacob Zuma fare. I don't think Zuma is going to fare that well. I don't feel anybody here is going to fare that well. Um. But I see justice coming. That's what I said. Yeah, in South Africa. So. Yeah. And I want to visit. So South send send lots of love and light. We're going to Kenya, and Tanzania this year, but I I want to go to South Africa because um I've always wanted to go. Well, there you go. Okay, Mary. When do you see me get? Oh, this is a personal question, but it's okay. When do you see me getting new baby in my daycare struggling financially? In other words, the next when... couple, within the next three weeks, three or four weeks. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say I felt by June, July. Well, you're a little bit further out than I am, but I see three. It could be three days, three weeks, three months. I hope you're right. And I'm. Colleen, hello. I'm not sure if anyone remembers, but when the Karen McDougal story broke, there was another story about a friend of Dumps. Um, um, Elliot Elliot Brody. Brody admitting to paying for another Playboy Bunny's abortion. 
then shortly afterwards, Brody got a lucrative contract for his business with a Middle Eastern government. I have always wondered, is this a cover for another of Dump's affairs, knowing his evangelical followers wouldn't condone an abortion? Um, I'm going to answer it this way. I see people coming forward. Okay. Um, that will testify as to what Brody did. And I see the scandal being made public. So let's see, it's a cover of another, okay. Um, and it's gonna show that he used really high up people in the government to get that contract. Um, and also for people to be quiet. So I'm hearing truth will prevail in, in this whole thing. I have to be very careful of the way I answer it. And that's why I was uh and stammering. I understand. Well, I'm, yeah, it's 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 like playing mad libs. Uh, right. But that's but, an excellent question. It's a really good question. But the question basically is did he pay for an abortion for Trump? is the bottom line. The hypocrisy will be revealed. That's how I'm going to answer it. Yeah. <laughs> Time will tell. Well, I think everybody knows what I'm saying. Mm hmm But, all right. It's sure. sad. It's just sad. Right. Yeah. But Beverly Thompson, 460. More personal, but it's okay. Ever since my NDE, near-death experience, I astroplane frequently. Is that like hydroplaning? Yeah. But without the water. I know what it means. I know what it means. I'm being funny. I know. When I touch items, wondering about future events and past events. I saw 9-11 when I was driving. A sharp pain in my shoulders brought me back. I drew it at, after I got home. I have many similar stories to share. Can you give me some direction of what I'm meant to do with these gifts? Thank you for all empath astroplaners. Well, typically, I also think um, when you touch items, wondering about future events, um, past events, that could be psychometry. Mm -hmm. Everything's recorded. Um, the night before 911, I was sitting at my kitchen table with my friend Mirius, son, and he was drawing planes flying in the buildings. And I'm like, what are we doing? And the very next morning, that's what happened. So we all know what it means when we look at it retrospectively. But let's just say with 911, even if we had seen it in its entirety, and we start calling people saying, oh my God, planes are going to crash into trade world trade centers, they would have been like, are you crazy? And then when it happened, we could have very well gotten arrested. Um, my advice is make a journal of them. And if you think it's something that can be prevented, then you speak up. But you don't you, you don't ever want to give anybody anxiety or, any, or anything. So I would say make a journal. I know that's not the answer you're looking for, but I've worked on a lot of murder cases and missing people. And I never volunteered if a family came to me on a murder case or a missing person, I would take it under the, you know, a few stipulations that I didn't charge. And that if the police department came to me, I could no longer have anything to do with a family because oftentimes a family member is a key, is a person of interest and that I wouldn't go to the press. So if you're getting something on a, on a big case, I'd be careful about calling the police department, number one, because they're getting calls from a million people saying, I'm a psychic and here's what I feel. Number two, if you're really accurate about it, I've seen times when people could be arrested. So, you know, I would make a journal of it and that's how I would. And by the way, astral planning was what we refer to nowadays as remote viewing or coordinate remote viewing. I know what astral planning is. But... I used to do that as a kid. Me too. I think all of us did. Me too. As kids. Show up places when we're supposed to be in bed show up at different places right right 
I'm sorry about the long drawn out answer. I just it's not long and drawn out. It, it makes sense because this is a very in depth question, and also the near death experience on top of it adds another layer of credibility as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah, yeah. but I agree with you about making a journal. Um, but I, I wouldn't run around telling people that you do this. Um, it's like, I don't tell people I'm psychic and you know, it's like, because you tell someone you're psychic, they'll say, prove it. Well, you I've been talk to angels. They say they walk away real fast. Well, I've been doing this for so many years that everybody knows I'm a psychic. Mm -hmm. And when I would go out and I would do a lot of television or radio or something, people will go, Mel Dora, what do you see for me? And I would say, appointment. Here's my card, make an appointment. Well, no, no, no. What do you see right now? I go, Well, I see myself having a good time right now because I'm having dinner. But thank you so much for saying hello. But no, but I have a question. Okay, here's my office number. You can call them. I know. So you have to sit down. You have to sit down. When I get that, I always tell people, you wake up breathing tomorrow. If not, oops. <laughs> You have to set boundaries with it. I mean, I'm okay. cordial, I'm very nice. Uh, well, it's but, just like I've been around a lot of celebrities, and people come up and ask for autographs. And Kenny Rogers would never give an autograph. He would just put his hand around the person and say, "You want to take a picture with me? We can do that." And that was it. He said they just want to spend time with you. That you know. Plus, there's a lot of autograph seekers out there to sell. So, yeah, you know, that's how they did it. Okay. But off that little thing. Burkle. Is that Urkel? Do you see Saudi Arabia allowing Israel to use its airspace to bomb Iran for supporting Hamas in Gaza? Will the Arab states side with Israel or push for peace? The Arab states are not going to side with Israel. Um, now, I am pro Israel. But anti Netanyahu. Exactly. And I think the rest of the world is pretty much anti Netanyahu right now, too. Um, and I see him being uh, tried for war crimes at some point. It might be once he's gone. But I don't feel Saudi Arabia is going to allow Israel to use its airspace to bomb Iran. I don't think, mm -hmm. I don't care. I agree. What I do see at some point, a lot sooner than later, is a leader coming to Israel who will be a real leader. I feel a female and she'll work diligently to bring about peace in the Middle East, but set boundaries and like, don't do this to Israel. Mm -hmm. um, it was wrong for Hamas to do what they did, but it wasn't the people in Gaza who did it. It was Hamas. No, right. People in Gaza are paying the price with their lives and it's just not cool. Mm -hmm. um, I see at some point a, a peaceful leader coming to Palestine as well. And I see them being two separate countries or states, Israel and Palestine, mm -hmm. that will exist, that will coexist peacefully. Right. That's what I see. And I think we'll see that a lot sooner than later. And I'll just say ditto. Ditto. I see the same thing. Actually, I've been saying that I always feel Netanyahu stepping down or fleeing um, end of June into July is, is what my keep on getting on that one. Well, people in Israel are going to be protesting in the streets a lot more. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> well, more stuff is coming. Look, they just found those, those unmarked graves by the hospital in Gaza. And a lot more is going to come out. And I think many... Israelis are angry with what Netanyahu is doing. And their kids are being killed. Right. But Israeli children, their sons too. And daughters, because in Israel, I think men and women have to join the military. Mm -hmm. But um I see Netanyahu gone. He'll try to he'll try to pull some shenanigans about, you know, you can't vote me out or whatever, whatever. I don't know what he's going to try to pull, but he will not succeed. As far as I'm concerned, he'd like to be another authoritarian dictator. Oh yeah, I agree. But, but I it's see, I see a strong leader coming to Israel, and it's not Netanyahu. No, I think we said that last show. I and I was saying something like a gold in my ear type figure. 
We did. We said that. We've said it for a long time, for a very long time. Okay. Hold my ear, Bella Azog. I get them confused. No. <laughs> Just kidding. Entertainment purposes only. Hold the Azog. <laughs> did you write this next one? No, I did not. Odd Girl Scout? That's not you? No, I bought the cookies. In fact, when I went to the grocery store, they were selling Girl Scout cookies, right? And I said, do you take credit card? No, we take them. And I go, how many boxes you got there? And she says, well, we just got three boxes. I go, I'll take all three. <laughs> like, what? I go, yeah, I'll take all three. <laughs> you know, the boxes have so many girls to have cookies in there. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. So I think I owed someone got least some money. So I've been on it. And I said, um, I'm in a really good mood today. Here, I'm going to Venmo another $100 and put that in your account too. <laughs> I bought all the Girl Scout cookies. I came home and I got all these Girl Scout cookies. And Gary goes, what are you doing? I go, it looks like a lot of people are going to get Girl Scout cookies. I felt so, those kids were, they yeah. were out there really working. And I'm like, you know what? They're out here working. They need to be, you know, rewarded for this. So. <laughs> Do you remember Louis Anderson, comic Louis Anderson? No. <laughs> Rather large comic. He said when he first was on OptiFast to try and lose, this is back in like the 80s, trying to lose weight. And he said, I started getting really hallucinating and started getting dingy. The doorbell rings, I open up, it's a Girl Scout selling cookies. He said, the first thing out of my mouth was, you won the trip. Right. So I think this is going to be our last one. Um, that's that, that, that is the last one. I'm Scout Malo Maloha. My mom is sensitive. Mah Mahalo. My mom is sensitive to electricity within her house, her car, and within our environmental places. She says it causes imbalance issues, and she has difficulty walking, almost falling over at times. Often she hears sounds others cannot hear. We don't know what to make of this since we do not hear or we do not feel what she feels or hear what she hears. Are her physical mental issues because she is sensitive to electricity or some sort of energy? Is it other underlying health conditions or anything else? She's such a sweet woman, grateful for any advice. Thank you. I am not a physician, so I am not in any capacity to be able to diagnose. I do know with some forms of uh, Parkinson's and other things, and here again, I'm not diagnosing, there can be patients report some of these sorts of things that's going on. Uh, the flip side of that is, is that even if that is the case, a lot of times the filters are gone and we can be much more sensitive to things going on in the environment. So I think it's a combination of that too. Uh, but, you know, I would clearly, just to be safe on the safe side, to overrule things, I would clearly take her to a neurologist or a neuro neuropsych neuropsychiatrist or neuropsychologist and have her evaluated. Uh, I'm not saying she's got an illness because I'm not a doctor, but... Um, you know, um, but I do think that certain things, uh, chemical things in our brain, or chemical imbalances in our brain can make us more sensitive to things in the environment. Um, I'm not saying that's what's going on with your mom, but that would be how intuitively I would explain it. Intuition doesn't quite work this way, the way you're describing it. Yeah. Um, or psychic ability, and I use the word intuition, psychic ability, mediumship, because uh, it all comes from a spirit interchangeably. So when we say we see, it's in our mind's eye. We hear, it's with our inner, inner uh, ear, an inner voice. Mm -hmm. uh, we feel, you know. You did a short on that. What was that short you did about one of the Claire's? I forgot what it oh, was. Oh, Claire Audience. What was it? This Claire Audience. Do you hear what I hear? Yeah. <laughs> Thinking about Trump. Right, right. Um, but it's not like you're describing it here. Well, I'm, what I when I was looking at this, I'm like, is her mother turning into a mutant? Like she's got this like connection to electricity. 
I don't mean I'm, I'm I don't mean to poo poo this in any way, shape, or form. But I was feeling that I wasn't feeling that ener- that kind of energy around her. I feel it was something organic around her. That's how I'm going to read it. That's what I pick up too. Yeah. So, Mr. Melvin, <laughs> go sit in the corner. No, uh, you're bad. Melvin, <laughs> go to the office. We so, wrote the history books right the first time. What part of that don't you understand? That's exactly what the teacher said. Oh my God, I'm talking about gaslighting. And I was like, no, you didn't. Well, at least you're, I mean, my nun was tossing holy water on me. So, and if I had known, I would have said, I'm not sizzling, cut it out. Oh, I had that too. Yeah. Please. Oh, remember that, how that hit your hand? Oh, man. The, and the Pollard method? Oh, yeah, I know. And you had to hold your pencil like, this and move your hand and if you were left-handed you were oh and then force you to write with god right. you're you're not god. Did it wrong you yes i'm dyslexic and i'm i i can write with both so whatever well, i found out later in life i have something called dyscalculia and that is kind of to numbers what dyslexia is to letters and it's hard for us to add and subtract in our head when i was a kid when i was in grade school i would count on my fingers like no you can't count on your fingers. So I draw dots on my paper, little dots. And then I count the dots. And that's how I taught myself to add or subtract. And the teacher would say, he draws dots all over his papers. My mother said, why do you do that? I said, that's how I add and subtract. Nowadays, they call it touch math. I would say connect them and see what pictures I'm drawing. Oh, that wouldn't have been pretty. <laughs> I was, a, I was a good reader, but sister read um, between the lines. There you go. We got graded in conduct. Oh yeah, and it, and it was funny, and it was not until way later in life that I found out that I had ADD in dyscalculia. But after my mother passed away, she saved everything. I found a napkin for my first birthday party. It was Mickey Mouse, and I still love Mickey Mouse. It suits my moods. But anyway, I found all my old report cards in grade school, and all of them needs to sit still and needs to learn to follow directions. And I talked to a psychologist friend of mine and uh, he said, that's clearly ADD. Now it would be- I was going to but I would just have to move and I would be like- <laughs> now there, yeah, I didn't know I was dyslexic and I spelled the word because wrong all the time. I'm not having you write because 500 times. Oh, I know. I turned it in. That was I wrote wrong. it wrong 500 times. <laughs> Don't they? You saw I was being a smart ass. Don't they think they didn't realize something was wrong? I didn't get it. You know, I used to get the, the small D's and the and the small B's mixed up. Uh, but anyway. And then when I went to Hawaii. I thought my eyes were going to pop out when I saw those signs. <laughs> All right, Mr. Arthur. Now, if somebody wants to get a hold of you for a reading, and he's oh. brilliant because if it wasn't for Mel, I wouldn't be here. Well, everybody has something to do with it, but you know. Well, everybody hit the thumbs up, the bell, and the subscribe button. And you can do go to my channel and do the same thing. Uh, not the middle finger, the thumbs up. Thank How you. do we get a reading with you? If they want to get a reading from me or find out about our, our or find out about our event in September. You can call my office at 847-590-5411. And if you want to see like a, a flyer about our event in September, you can go on my website at www.meldoor.com. And I also have to say that Psychic Arthur is the one who made that brochure or that flyer. So, it was automatic writing. I didn't do it. That spirit came to me. Automatic writing. I'm so computer illiterate. Like I tried to do a. I tried to do one and like. We know. Something. I saw it. We know. I was calling Arthur, going like, "Oh my god!" I had it all laid out. It looked so good. And when I saved it, it was like, <laughs> I'm like, well, what did I do? Some people think Picasso's are beautiful. Well, I mean, it looked great when I was working on. It. I'm like, wow. And then when I tried to save them. I had a plastic surgeon friend, and he said the one question that used to get him was when somebody would say, "Can you, you can you do a work of art like like a Picasso?" He goes, "You really want your nose in the wrong place." 
So well, Psychic Arthur did the, the, the flyer. He did a great job. So how do they get a hold of you, sir? Well, when I'm not with my face in the corner because I'm a bad boy, uh, it's no, it's basically Arthur Ease Your Mind here on YouTube or ArthurEaseYourMind.com. A R T H U R E S E A S E E U R Y O U R Mind M I N D dot com or 310-494-5955. However, if you call and say, I have a question, understand I will say make an appointment. That's what, yes. Now, what was your phone number again? 310-494-5955. And I would suggest everyone getting a reading from Arthur. He's amazing. He's a very, very, very talented psychic. Um, and so I guess next week, you know, this is kind of the Arthur and Mel show. Uh, and we just trade weeks, you know. And, and sometimes I'll just put up every show on my channel just i need i need i need subscribers i'm trying to get to ten thousand by the end of the year so come on um and you know i mean i like it when i get subscribers as well um but i think one of these days that you and i should just do a live thing like this and see how that plays out i think it'll go well well i just signed up with Streamyard, so i i'm doing my first live show with val on thursday actually uh, it's a learning. It I still don't know how to use Streamer on that long, but I'm learning. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, I got a really sweet note from Kevin Lewis that he'd help me. So thank you, Kevin. Right. Anyway, people, thank you so much for taking your time. We hope you laughed a little bit. I know I giggled, you know, but we're insane anyway. But no, just have fun and take care of yourself, take care of others, and most importantly, have fun and stay amazing. Isn't that and right, Mel? And if you go in a courtroom, get the pine saw spray. <laughs> or the little, the little tree. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Love you all. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.